For my nasturtiums, firstly I cut strips in different widths and then I cut the strips into squares. And you want all sorts of different sizes and again for the leaves I've got squares which I'm going to trim into the circles of the leaves. I'm going to start by using the reeled nippers to cut these squares into the petals of the flowers and I want to use the round part of the blade to give me the, the starting curve. So I'm going to basically put the nippers in there and cut that out. And then I'm going to do it here and take that side. And then I'm going to roughly just grind and chop the rest of the petal like that. Each of them want to be slightly different, so you just roughly chop it to get the shape. I'm going to allow the springs of the cutters to do most of the leverage work and hold the cutters right down at the bottom here. That'll be much easier on your wrists and your arms without all the cutting we're going to be doing. It also pushes the jaws open because we want to use them as a grinder. So just put it on the edge of the glass, or quite close to the edge, and then literally just go like that. And you're putting it right on the edge. Instead of putting it here, just here, and then grind away like that. And just grind away roughly. We can go back and take bits off. It takes a bit of use, getting used to this, but a bit of practice and you'll be there. Okay, so there's the first one. When I come to stick this down in my mosaic, I want to make sure that this pen mark is either removed or that it is on the upper side of the glass so that if it doesn't actually get glued into the glass. Not so important with an opaque piece like this, but if this was a transparent piece of glass, that pen mark would show through and it would be stuck in the glue forever. So we can just take that off later on. So let's put the first one there and get on with the others. So again, take the corner out and take the other corner out. And you have that. And then up again to the edge and grind through. This one I'm going to try and make quite pointed at the top and thinner around the body of the petal. number two. Now, as you can see this makes a lot of mess so I'm going to be sweeping up in a minute. Okay, we've got our five petals there. Now those petals will need to be trimmed when you cut them, put them actually into the mosaic itself. So with this set here, I would probably trim one of those off to make it look as if it was overlapping the one next to it. Possibly even with this one as well. So they can go together like that. So this bit here and this, I would probably cut out thing to do is leave it till you're ready to use in your mosaic because you don't know where it's going to fit. You can see this little piece here. I'm just going to make a bud from this. So just a long thin cone and that can be a bud. You will hear me repeat this throughout my videos. Sweep up these pieces but don't throw them away. I keep the various colours like yellows, blues, pinks, reds all in separate boxes and then use them to make up other flowers like crocosmia. I use the yellows to make the centre of daisies 
and these sort of colours I will actually insert into between the petals of the nasturtiums to give the look of the stamens. Also, some of these larger pieces I've actually used to make bunting, so don't keep throw them away, just sweep them up, put them in a box and keep them on your shelf to the later use. Okay, once you've got all your petals cut, you can start to arrange them like this. Some of them will need trimming down to fit in. Okay, I'm going to trim this one a little bit here so that it looks as if it's under the petal that it's next to. Okay, as one nasturtium, I'm going to carry on and do some more of these. Also, I'm going to sweep up all these little bits and show you what I'll do with them later. But you can draw if it's easier for you to have a line to follow. So insertion leaves are more or less round, so you just want a sort of raggedy circle. Once you get used to cutting the shapes, you'll probably find it quite easy to go without drawing on them. So let's just do this one. With this, because I've got some quite big bits at the edges, I'm actually going to take those big bits out first. And that lessens the tension on the glass when I want to grind the edges down. Okay, so. What I'm doing is allowing the spring here to do the work of opening up the jaws all the time and holding them as low down as I can. It makes it a lot less hard work on your hands when you're constantly chopping and nipping away. And the spring will help open them up so you can use them like that and sort of grind the edges rather than nipping. So just keep going in. And I'm just catching the edge of the glass as I go around like this. I'll just take some of these big points out like that. Okay, that should do it. And we'll do this one as well. So again, just go around in a ragged circle. Okay. Again, I keep all these bits and I put them into what I call a green background box. And all of these mixed colours of green I use to fill in behind all my flowers. Okay, you can see my tray of bits in the background. And those are things that I always keep and I use them for the centre of flowers. I will put them in amongst the nasturtiums. I use them when I'm building crocosmia and lots of other things. And also to scatter in the green backgrounds to give a hint of other flowers behind. Now you can see I've got all my nasturtium petals cut here and I also have these little nuggets which I scatter in amongst these which sort of give the impression of other flowers and buds. The green ones are really to give the impression of the seed heads which are actually sort of three seeds stuck together but this will give you the same look. Now this leaf as you can see these lines will be where I cut it to add the veins but I never do that until I'm ready to stick down into the glue because otherwise 
it's even though it's only six pieces it, it's worse than a rubik's cube it can get in such a muddle that you can never get it sorted properly so leave the actual cutting of those until you're ready to put them in place in the glue itself right let's start building these nasturtiums so I'll put those to the side and take your petals and put them together and if they don't fit trim them so that one can go there I prefer that side it's brighter but I'm going to trim here and here to make it fit better so just hold it over the top and you can see roughly where you need to go and the bits can go in there that would go there and then this one Okay, so that petal now looks like it's behind the others. And let's bring a yellow one in, so I'd have a, a yellow one next to it. For those of you who grow these flowers, you know they're fairly prolific when they get going. And of course you can add butterflies to this because they are very popular with butterflies. And they're very popular with caterpillars, in fact. And again, this one's going to need trimming. Let's take that one out, put this one in. This is already quite thin, so we'll trim that one down to fit. Or this one a bit more. So it goes there. There we go. And keep going. You can add your petals. You're sorry, you can add your leaves in here as well. If I draw the veins on it'll give you a better idea of how they'll look once they're done because I use the black grout for the veins so I don't bother adding veins I just use the grout and let that do its work. And you can scatter some of these in there If you've got ladybirds, they can go in as well. Okay, keep building up. So this one could be behind. If we bring this leaf over here so you can see it better. This next one could be half behind this leaf. So let's put it like that. Bring that leaf down and put this one here. Trim that off there. And so you lay it out as if it's behind the leaf there. That would be there. So the rest of them you probably wouldn't see. So we'll just use those two petals for this one and knit those out. So let's carry on with this one here. Now, as you can see, you can put lots of stalks and things in but I don't tend to bother because when this is actually going into the mosaic all of these areas are filled in with the mixed green scraps that I keep from other cutting projects and that gives the impression of the dark and the light right behind with other shrubs and plants growing there and now I said let's use these scraps that I'm so fond of keeping and you want to find quite skinny pieces which are going to go in here and you want contrasting colors so let's find yellow for this orange one here let's get ones that fit the gaps and quite long skinny ones and keep going until you Filled. You don't have to fill them all in, but keep going until you've filled in the ones that you particularly want to stand out. Okay, now this here, I'm going to find orange ones for that. They need to be quite small.
and keep going until you fill everything in the way you want it.